Hey guys! Have you noticed how some people get gray roots while others get gray streaks? I'm sure for those of you that grayed from the roots can agree that it felt really sudden and progressed quickly. And for those of you that formed gray streaks, it was a slow and gradual process. The difference could be due to when in your hair's growth cycle the graying occurred. Gray roots indicate that something happened mid-cycle. Based on two theories, either hydrogen peroxide levels suddenly increased or the melanin cells in your hair metrics suddenly stopped working. Here's a link to part one of this two-part series that goes over the science of these hydrogen peroxide and melanin changes. For some people, this sudden change can be a result of a physiological stressor like major surgery, a major trauma or illness, or just being super unhealthy. Some few people have even reported noticing the same hair strands start to grow out with color again after regaining their health, creating an interesting stripe effect. You can find a link to a study on this by Ralph M. Trube in the description section below. Individual completely gray hair strands or gray streaks indicate that something happened or stopped happening after a complete growth cycle. At the start of a new antigen growth stage, the melanin stem cells in the hair bulge fail to replenish the hair metric, causing the new hair strand to grow out colorless. With each hair follicle acting independently of each other, what you end up seeing are random gray hair strands throughout your head. This type of graying can also be due to poor health but is often due to genetics. That's why most young people you see that go gray tend to progress in this manner. Just so you know, gray hair is different from pigmented hair in a few key ways. First, a gray hair strand has a thinner cuticle layer than pigmented hair, so it's more porous. Also, low to no melanin production in gray hair also means low sebum production. That also explains why gray hair is more fragile and more prone to drying out. Here are real magnified images of hair strands, one gray and one brown. With gray hair, the innermost layer of the hair strand called the medulla is missing, or better, is an air bubble. So it's thinner and more fragile. You may also notice that gray hair strands have a looser curl pattern than pigmented strands as well. So the use of harsh chemicals like temporary or permanent hair dyes without proper counteractive measures will only further diminish the health of your already fragile gray hairs, causing it to look super dull and dry. Here are some links to a really informative five-part series that goes over the science of hair dyes. There are tons of natural and synthetic remedies out there that claim to reverse premature grain, but some are more promising than others. According to traditional Chinese medicine, gray hair is less about aging and more about weak kidneys and having low quality blood. Believe it or not, chlorophyll, which is found in dark green leafy vegetables, is an exceptional long-term option for preventing and reversing grays at any age. Chlorophyll strengthens, builds, and oxygenates your blood. It feeds and restores dying cells like melanin cells and contains catalase, which if you watched part one of this two-part series, keeps hydrogen peroxide in your hair follicles at bay. It also helps rebuild tissues and organs. Chlorophyll is like the fountain of youth and significantly slows down the aging process. The best way to consume chlorophyll is by juicing. Wheatgrass juice is 70% chlorophyll. It's a long-term option and it takes some getting used to, but it really does work and can save you from age-related illnesses. Also, a root powder called Hishuwu has been proven to also reverse gray hair at an 88.9% effective rate. Personally, I prefer drinking dark leafy greens to Hishuwu because it tastes like dirt to me. <laughs> but if you're interested, try it. 
Hee Shu Wu takes less effort to prepare because you can quickly mix it into a smoothie or in tea. Until recently, people fell into two basic groups. Those who dye their hair black until it's stiff and can't move, and those who allow their hair to gray out naturally. Nowadays, we have many cover-up options. There's permanent, progressive, semi, demi, and temporary hair dyes. There's also natural dye options like henna and indigo. Just in case you missed it earlier, here are the links to a comprehensive five-part series that goes over everything you need to know about these dye options. The problem with using dyes to cover up grays is you become stuck in this annoying cycle of having to touch up your roots over and over again as your hair grows out. But on the other hand, there's a growing fashion trend where people are purposely dyeing their hair gray. It's funny, some people are taking drastic measures to cover up natural grays, while others are purposely dyeing their hair gray and killing it. But if you're absolutely not ready to embrace the gray, but you don't want to expose your body to harsh toxic chemicals and hair dyes, you have options. You could experiment with organic hair dyes like henna and indigo. Here are two great YouTube videos on how to use henna and indigo to cover up grays. Or you can take real lifestyle efforts I mentioned earlier to reverse it. Because no matter what age you are, gray hair is reversible. One last thing. Did you know gray hair grows a lot faster than pigmented hair? I'm not going to go into the science because it's extensive and we'll be sitting here for an hour, but this gray hair strand I had last year grew this long in four months. I haven't seen any gray hair strands on my head ever since I began juicing on a daily basis, so juicing really does work. If you're interested in learning more on the science of why gray hair grows faster than pigmented hair, you can find a link to the study in the description section below. Anywho, I hope this two-part series on the science of gray hair was entertaining and helpful. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.